I've decided that 200 is not going to be a video podcast. It's just too hard to piece together to put everything together. I'm like, I'm just making audio. And that's yeah, it's sim- clips. Yeah, simple as that. I'll, I'll Maybe I'll edit some stuff together and just po- put a reel for it, but that's about it. But maybe yeah. I'll just do a progression video of like where where we started to where we are now kind of deal. Um, but um, I think this will be the first part I've been piecing them together and I think this will be the first part of episode 200. So for every, for all the listeners out there, um, we, I, I had a little mishap of the audio did not record. We had a hundred, we had an hour and 40 minute episode Uh. from start to finish video, everything. It was perfect. And it would, it, Ethan and I sat here, we watched it export. We watched the videos go on there. We watched it export. I created a folder, everything nowhere to be found <laughs> no, i have no idea where it went and that just goes to show everyone who's listening it's not as easy it's not as cut and dry as you think you think exporting it you'd be like oh there it is but there i sometimes it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do and i'm i was i was flustered man i when i saw i was like you gotta be kidding me An oh yeah hour you and 40 here. minutes you're freaking out a little bit there. And I was like, calm down. <laughs> Maybe it's here. Check. You know, I'm like, we both watched it yeah. download. It's fine. And it turned out it's not fine. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just in retrospect. I'm just glad it wasn't like with an, with a guest. Like that's, I think yeah. that's the bigger issue is like, I, I hate when it happens with a guest. I think the closest one we've had out of 200 episodes was with, was with Ryan Glitzky was where it was like, it wasn't, it was recording. I found out that it was recording afterwards. It was just very compressed that I just have to amplify it. But it was yeah. like, when we looked at the screen, it was like, it wasn't, we, you could see our vocals, but Ryan's was like this small. And I was like, like whispering. Yeah. I was like, so then I hit the zoom right away. So now for everyone who listens last night, um, today is the 28th, June 28th, last night, June 27th, we had a guest on, uh, Greg from whitetail partners and, <laughs> We recorded, I think, in total, five different ways. I think it was with the Zoom, with Google Meet, with Audacity, with the camcorder, and then I also had my DSLR running a little bit as well for that. So it's like we had multitude of ways recording now. So like, it's it's yeah, it might take up more space on the computer, but I can always once I have one hard copy done, I can just delete it. Yep. <laughs> so. This is going to be the start of episode 200. Um, we're pretty much just going to run through who we are uh, and just go from there, I think, because it's, we're not, I think everyone who sees, oh, it's a hunting podcast, these guys must be like killers. And I think that's one thing that we never really um, pushed is like, we're not killers. We're not like, big buck killers we're not going out there you know trying to harvest the biggest buck or just do that like we're we're more of the average joe the blue collar guys who have jobs have families Um, we just enjoy deer camp we enjoy the deer camp um feel and we just love hearing people's stories because that's the one thing we love about deer camp is sitting around the fire and hearing those stories because our dads tell the same stories how many times ethan yeah, all every year I hear the same handful of stories, but sometimes they're tweaked a little bit. Yep, yep. That's why I always thoroughly enjoy listening to them, no matter how many times I've heard them. Yeah, exactly. And I think uh, that's a good good segue into like kind of who we are as individuals, because people know us as the Backcountry PA podcast, but they don't really know us as individuals. Um, Ethan, do you want to start give a give the listeners what they want to hear of who you are and all that kind of good shit? Yeah, well, the name's Ethan. <laughs> my, my little uh, five-minute speech here. Um, I am the great uh, squirrel killer uh, and lip ripper of trout. That's about the, that's about about right. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. The deer see me and they know they're going to live. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still working on that one. Um, started, yeah, just. Started hunting probably a year or two later than most kids here in Pennsylvania, and got just just rifle, purely mm-hmm. rifle for 
basically almost most of my life. Um, got into small, small games. The one thing that I thoroughly love to do with my dad and still do to this day, if, if it's, you know, rut out and I'm not seeing a deer after a day, I'm taking the shotgun for a walk mm-hmm. and I'm coming home with a handful of squirrels, maybe some grouse, and then I'm, I'm calling it a good day. Um, love to fish. I still go out. I take my niece out all the time. We were just out the other day catching, I mean, little tiny creek chubs and crayfish. And we, it, it was a good day. You know, I just enjoy the little things when I'm outside. And just, I just like being out in nature in general. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter if I'm hunting or not. It's just, I just want to be out. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, the one thing, like, we, Ethan and I are, were both kind of just like, pure rifle hunters when we first started the podcast like it in the archery bug still i mean ethan still take it take a little bit to get ethan into archery but he's still out there he's doing it and that's all that really matters but like me i was bit by the arch bug early once i got into it but yeah dude like it was for me i'm cody by the way and (laughs) (laughs) but um like it was my dad who got me into it and it was my, my early years. It was like going up to Juniata County and my, and my grandparents cabin, it was their house, but we called the cabin cause we'd only go up there like over deer hunting season or once over the summer, um, go up there pretty much. And just, I'd be in the cabin with my grandmother while she, while my dad and my grandfather went to the other property and just we're hunting all day. We just wait for gunshots and wait for the walkie talkie to go off. Be like, Hey, we got one down. Like that is going to be come back with a tractor. And then I could go over with that ball in the back of the tractor. I remember like the earliest years was like, I was sitting in the back. Like my grandfather had a, a tractor, an orange tractor. Um, I, he still has it. I believe out at, at, uh, at an uncle Ken's right there. He has it in the barn, I believe. Um, but he had that tractor up there. He had a, a a trailer that he, I th- believe he built it himself, and mm-hmm. he would take it across, and we'd go across the main road, and then we'd go up on this dirt road, and I'd be in the trailer. I would be sitting in the trailer, like, holding on to the front of it for dear life, just holding there, because, like, the one hill we had to go up, it was a pretty steep hill. Um, back then, it was steep. Now, I actually know what steep is, but it was <laughs> it was a steep hill. And, you know, you bounce all around, you know, you get up there. And I think the coolest part was like, I didn't know what my dad got at the time. Like I never knew what my dad got. So like, it was always like, oh, I wonder what, I was just excited to see what he got. Like that excitement to see what he got was what got me into hunting. And that's mm-hmm. in, in tail. That's why I wanted to get into it just as much. I wanted to be out there with my dad. I wanted to be doing things with my dad. I wanted to be out in the woods, you know, I wanted to have this have that excitement for myself when I got so excited when I got to see what he got down. Um, I, I, the best one I've, I could remember was when he shot a buck and a doe, uh, the same day. And then like, it's, it's, if you follow us on Instagram, it's the one that I post quite often of like my dad lifting the buck up into the tree and uncle Ken's, mm-hmm. like, it's just such a, a nostalgic photo of like, old yep. school stuff just sitting there and I'm like I have my for some reason I have the hat over my face I don't know why it's just man I wish I could <laughs> that's one thing I wish I could find like the old horse's hat again like the old horse's hat you don't see him anymore no they need to bring him back yeah 100% but yeah so like that's you're here in this episode I sit down with my wife too and we talk a little bit about it but like I talk about it and where in there too where it's like before the podcast it was three times six times a year I would go out for rifle that's primarily it like I wasn't big in a small game like it just wasn't something for me but yeah I mean that's that's pretty much how I got started where I came from and you know the the backbone of uh of my hunting career really like there was times like there was times where I in my mind I was like I might not even hunt I don't really want to hunt this year like it just before the podcast and now it's like it's fully engulfed in me now. It's it's not going anywhere. Can't picture life without it at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's a, this is the a big part of my life. So it's like mm-hmm. no, whether you like it or not, this is staying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so we've covered who we are, where we came from. Um, 
let's Ethan, I think this is more on your side, so you can you can talk about this, but how the podcast started. We we were on a few podcasts, I think only like two podcasts actually, surprisingly. And two podcasts. Well, that's because we're not big buck killers. That's why we're not on other podcasts. Yeah, we gotta yeah. shoot some big bucks and then we can go on our podcast tour. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then we'll be good to go. I don't I don't even want to go on a podcast tour. It's just it's too much work. I honestly, I was literally thinking about that the other night. Yeah. Like, man, I get like, cause like, I mean, last, this last episode, mm -hmm. this would be last step. One of these, we talk with Greg. Yes. Uh, <laughs> one of the episodes we talk with Greg, he's been on the last two of recent ones compared mm -hmm. to uh, number 200 here. Um, and doing all this like e-scouting and like, I know that there's big buck in the area that I want to go hunt on public land and, I get, you know, getting excited. I was like, oh, man, what if I get one of these big bucks? That would be so cool. And I was like, man, am I going to have to go on, like, a, a podcast tour if I get one of these? Or if, like, Cody and I, like, double down in the same oh, year, gosh. like, 140s each. Like, yeah. we're doing, like, a podcast, a podcast, doing a podcast tour. Like, how's that? <laughs> Dude, it's, it's. I was like, I don't even know if I would even want to do that. No, because then, like, my, my thing is, like, we could talk. I feel like the difference between people going on podcast tours don't have a podcast is like, they don't have that podcast to do that. Like we'd tell a story on the podcast, but like we, we'd have to tell it on ours first before we go into other podcasts, like tell it. It's like it, but it is kind of funny how like, and I, we can get into this too before the podcast started, because when we first started the podcast, it was the, the podcast realm was not like this at all. Social media, I feel like it wasn't like this at all. We're like, it's just crazy how people just want to feel important for whatever amount of time. Like they want that five minutes of fame, you know, it's, 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 it sucks sometimes, but the podcast, how did it start Ethan? from your, oh. from your side of things? Yeah. So it was working third shift still am. Um, <laughs> And it was about the time where, like, I had my own business at the time, working third shift. And I was like, man, I could do something else. Like, I would have loved to get out of working third shift the mm -hmm. whole nine. And I was like, you know what? Why did I? And then the whole, at first, it was just like, you know what? Maybe if I could start, like, a YouTube channel or something. Mm -hmm. and, like, people make some cool videos. You get some money. You know, the, the whole nine. And then I'm thinking, like, well, what the hell can I even, what, what would I do? Right? <laughs> And I think at the time I was on the kick of like watching fishing videos on YouTube. I don't know. I just, I still do watch fishing videos from time to time. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, fishing and ooh, maybe hunting. That would be cool. Any outdoor stuff. I said, that's possible. And I was like, I don't know if I'd want to do it by myself. And so I was like, you and I, I mean, we hung out all the time anyway. So I was like, well, he likes to hunt. Well, let me see if Cody wants to do this. And I would just text you. And it was early in the morning. I was at work, actually. Mm -hmm. I text you. I said, hey, what would you think about doing a hunting, fishing, outdoor podcast, YouTube video, YouTube channel kind of deal? And then you were just like, yes. Like, oh, 100%. Like, you didn't even think about it. Just yes. And then it just, I mean, it took off mm -hmm. from there. Yeah. I mean. I mean, tell you, like, you hit the ground running for this thing. You're just like, all right, here we go. Like, we found the, I mean, we thought we were the shit after that first episode. <laughs> Let me tell you, we had, we recorded, uh, was it, did we do the phone or the laptop on our first it, episode? It was, was the one? laptop. Yeah. Yeah. Well, laptop, we were in your garage uh, at the apartment, the first apartment you, mm -hmm. you and your wife ever lived in together. <laughs> Yeah, and everything was echoing, and we had like fifteen listens, and we're just yeah. like, "Yo, we got this." <laughs> yeah, it was it was surreal. Like it was it was kind of like we we didn't go into it thinking, "Oh, we're gonna get." For my mindset, it wasn't like, "Oh, I'm gonna we're gonna make all this money, all that kind of stuff." It was just kind of something that we could just do. Like I don't even know really what I was thinking when you sent that. Like it was just like I think the only podcast I really ever listened to was like Mediator. That was Mediator yeah. and Joe Rogan were like the only ones that I really knew of. And then I think it was like maybe 20 episodes in, I started finding out that like, oh, there's a bunch of hunting podcasts. Like there's actually, there's like that first one I found was like Rutten River Pursuit. 
And like yep. that was like the first one I saw that was in PA because I didn't think any other PA podcast was out there. Now there's a shit ton. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, when you sent that text, I don't even, I wish I remembered what was going through my mind. Like I wish like in those moments, you kind of wish you had like a camera crew around you just to like, yep. know what was going on and like follow your every step. Like that's one thing, one advice for everyone. Like if you're starting something, maybe try to document everything like because you never know you never know what's going to come of it you never know what's going to happen like it could blow up and you don't remember what you did like to get there like it was just like bam happened now we're not blowing up but we're having fun doing it like we're having a lot of fun doing this like talking to i would say at least 150 different people that we talked to which is Mm -hmm. crazy to think about a lot (laughs) yeah but yeah like i think the first step was like i had to I had to find out how to even upload a podcast. I was like, where do I even upload one to? Like, I, there's there's you, the YouTube route where you just post the YouTube. Mm-hmm. You have to put like one picture, then you put the audio underneath it. I was like, I wasn't good at that. Like, I never even knew about that back then. And then I found Anchor, which was free. We used that. We still used it up to about like a couple episodes ago. It was mm-hmm. just, and then, you know, it, it's, this the connections I think we made were awesome. And then uh, I made the the first logo with the OG logo. I made yep. that um, with uh, I believe I made that on Canva. I believe I did. Like I, I put did, yeah. I put a different bunch of little things together to make the logo, and we're like, "Yep, that's it." And then. Hey. Here we go. I forget. I wish I knew what names we went through or what names we thought of before we came to Backcountry PA Uh podcast. Like, I wish I knew. I think I have. It would be in. I don't know how you could do it. Yeah. But I think I have it in my mem. If it's in memories or on Facebook, we posted it like a poll. We posted. I I remember. I think we had the name, but we posted a poll for the logo. Yeah. I think that's what it was different logos and yeah i think we were like what the backcountry podcast yeah. at one point, at the very beginning we didn't yeah. even have a gay in there and yep. found out there was another one sim- too similar to that mm-hmm. name and now nah, we're from pennsylvania let's do this yeah and and the backstory on why we did the backcountry pa podcast was because ethan and i both had cabins in potter county at the time ethan still has yeah. his I I no longer have mine up in that area, but I have my parents' camp now, which is, you know, still in big hills, uh, a lot of public around it. But, you know, we, at the time we were hearing everyone talk about like going out West to hunt, you know, do that kind of stuff. And we were like, they were always talking about the backcountry hunting and doing and camping and doing all that. Like that was the big craze when we first started. Yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, there's backcountry hunting in where in our neck of the woods because if you walk in far enough, if you walk in down my camp, my camp was, you see like camps in the state forest, like the little camps like camp out, and I was like, that's backcountry camping, like that's that's what it is. Oh yeah, that's where it came from then. Yeah, I'm and, stuck with it ever since. Yeah, the logo has changed. We wanted to upgrade the logo, make it more appealing, all that kind of stuff, and I think we definitely did that. We both love it. Um, yep. that was from another PA company who made that for us. So that was pretty cool. Keeping in, keeping in the state, mm-hmm. but yeah, I mean, it's, it's stay it, in the state. It's, it's crazy to, <laughs> to see where, where it started in a townhouse garage and where it's at now. Um, it's just absolutely insane to think that, and then went from like the townhouse garage to Eric's actual recording studio in his basement. Yep with actual mics. And then after that, it was like, you know, we can't be paying 50 bucks a month to go to this guy and just <laughs> record we're bringing any money in. Yeah. We're not bringing any money. in. so like, and then Jess and I bought a house and there was a woodshed out back that I wasn't using. I was, so I was like, that's going to be the new studio. And finally got it. Finally got it. Now I would say in three years in to where I actually like it and it's comfortable and it still has <laughs> couches and chairs and, you know, I think it's it's finally completed. Other than a few mounts on the wall that still need to be on the wall, um, but that's that's in the future. You know, I need to get them in the future. 
Got to get them. We're working on that. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, from going from the townhouse garage also to taking a trip out to Illinois, that yep. was crazy. <clears throat> yeah. Never expected to do that mm-hmm. ever, Yeah, honestly. It was like you sent me that. I know it was a text. I don't know if you text me that mm-hmm. or if I was over whatever, and you're just like, hey, what do you think about going to Illinois? Yeah. And, like, my first I was just like, uh, how much? Like yeah. that was my first thing. I hundred was like, how much are you talking about? Yeah. I was like, oh, just tags. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. I said, I think we can swing that. How, when are we going? December? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'm still down because who knows if I'll ever do it again. But yep. like, I mean, I would love to go out. Mm-hmm. And honestly, really, I mean, Illinois. I mean, it sucks yeah. driving there. Oh yeah. It's yep. the most flat boring all those states mm-hmm. we went through ohio indiana oh, Illinois. Like, you got yeah. a boring state i'm sorry but your deer are awesome so i can't yeah. come much <laughs> <laughs> no but yeah i mean it's um to and for all the listeners out there like we never would like what ethan said like we never would have went to illinois if it wasn't for the podcast put it that way like we it right. wasn't something ever on our list like it was like i'm fine with hunting pa fine with it and we got the offer from the outfitter to go out there and he was like, Hey, bring some people out with you. And you guys, all you do is pay for tags and just tip the guys. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like there, there's perks to doing it and putting a lot of effort in. I feel like you got to put the effort in to get stuff back. Like it's just the more effort you put in, the more, the better quality product you put out there, the more you get back in return. And people will see that as well because you're offering stuff to people in in the in turn right like mm-hmm. you're offering knowledge and good conversations to people um yep. so my dad you, always said yeah. that he's like you you get out of something mm-hmm. what you put into it he, it doesn't matter what it is in life he's always told me that so if you want if you want something good mm-hmm. you gotta be able to put in good work yep exactly yeah ethan you had some stuff you had some topics before we get into wrapping this part up here yeah uh let's see um so we're we're five years in Mm -hmm. another five years another five years where do you see the podcast from from day one to year five Mm -hmm. how much changed and grown from year five to year 10 what do you what what was your your vision here my vision um i my this is going to sound bad to people because we got into it for not the money, but like, because of, you know, family stuff, because electricity is going up because all that kind of stuff, it's like making a little bit of money off it would be ideal, right? The next five years, yeah. some, some kind of money of some kind. Um, just keep growing the connections. I think having more deer camps, having my, what we talked about a few years ago was like doing a cookout for like listeners and followers and all that kind of stuff. Like, I think that'd be pretty cool to have a, like a pig roast or something like that at a, at a park. And, and you just have everyone come out. They can shoot their bows their crossbows or just, you know, play cornhole, just have that camaraderie and, you know, share, like do that. Like the, that kind of thing would be cool to do in the next five years. Just keep, I think I just want to keep enjoying it. Really? Because, like, there's moments where, like, if you get too in-depth with stuff, like, for for me, like, if you post too much on – try and if you try and post things just to post things on Instagram, I find, like, you don't find as much joy in it. Like, mm-hmm. for me, like, I was trying to fill just because, oh, I got to post this stuff just to post it. It doesn't – the podcast is the main thing. Like, it, I just – you just have to enjoy what you're doing and the, the – if you get away from that, it's not fun anymore. So like, yeah. that's my main thing. The next five years, just keep enjoying it and keep growing as a person. I think growing internally and externally is very important. So like doing that, building the connections and going to more events, I think is the ideal situation next five years. Yeah. Maybe a little yeah. better audio too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we upgrade the mics a little bit, you know, yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, we're on the right path. You finally got a, oh, you know yeah. a nice, nice new door here, and you know you got. A, it is. It's a nice door. You, that was like the one thing you were talking about for the longest time. I need a new door. Yep. And then you finally got it. Yep. Um. Five. Yeah. Five years. Oh man. But 
yeah, I mean, just keeping it real, mm -hmm. bringing in some money at some point would be nice. Like, I'm not even, I'm not talking like nope. I want to quit my job. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I could do this full time, <laughs> that would be fantastic. I'm, yeah. I'm, yes, right. But I would love just enough to cover like all any expenses mm -hmm. for updating, upgrading any equipment, um, doing that stuff. Well, I could pay for any hunting stuff. Mm -hmm. just, like that, so that like my actual job can pay for the the, the bills, the bills, for bills, yeah, whatever, and whatever my wife wants at the moment, you know those those kind of things, then we're good to go. Yeah, um, but yeah, keep. I just I want to keep hearing all the stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll never run out of stories. No, I mean, thinking like every single season, there's going to be new stories to hear. Mm -hmm. So it's like as long as we just we keep those stories, and you never get tired of hearing them. Even if it's like, oh, this one kind of sounded like this one. It was mm -hmm. a similar experience, but yet I still love hearing it. Yep. And no deer is ever the same either. Like it, it's nope. primarily buck stories we hear. We do hear some doe stories, first doe, all that kind of stuff. But like mm -hmm. no buck looks the same. Like there's no, I have six buck in the studio and none look the same. Right. Like that's a cool thing. Yeah. They're like snowflakes. Yep. Yep. Oh, unique. <laughs> Little white snowflake. So is that is that it for five years? Is that what all you all you think about top of your head? Top of my head, yeah. yeah. Just I keep growing too. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be be better on the the woodsmanship and mm -hmm. just keep enjoying keep enjoying what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah, enjoy the process. Enjoy the process. Yeah, <laughs> you know, keep hunting, yeah. keep fishing. Yeah. What <laughs> else? What else you got there, buddy? Um. What we learned, I kind of, we kind of covered a little bit what mm -hmm. we learned over the past 200 episodes. I mean, I feel like to drop yeah. all the knowledge, yeah, to drop all the knowledge we've learned, like I've learned a ton about like scouting and the, I, the one thing I'm trying to get into now is like playing the wind and the thermals. I think that's the big thing. And then after that, it'll probably be the food sources, like knowing the food sources when I walk into the woods, you know? Like the woodsmanship stuff, like you said about, you know, green, keep growing their woodsmanship. I think that's a big thing. Yeah. Definitely learning more on the e-scouting e side. Mm -hmm. that's, that's actually kind of exciting. Yeah. To learn a little more about that. Um, the habitat management that just, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, that's like the one thing that fascinates me. It's like, and not even strictly whitetails, just animals in general, from the, the little, the little bugs up to the big bear, mm -hmm. you know? having the the wild the habitat management to cover all of it learning from so many different people of like hey you could do this you could do this and just find what works mm -hmm. and then go so learning yeah. that definitely helps a lot and learning that uh you don't have to kill the biggest buck or you don't have to kill something every year to still you know feel part of the community mm -hmm. yep you know, you and, like, yeah. hey, i love the outdoors and like Come on in. You're yep. welcome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, what else we have here? Um, we got season goals. We can cover that later. Yep. Um, this one. What makes our podcast different from other podcasts? Because since, like we said earlier, there's there's a lot of podcasts out yes. for hunting and fishing. Ethan, you want to answer that one first? Do you want to drop your knowledge first? Of mm, What makes ours different? Um. I would say the, I mean, really the stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like we, like yeah, we cover tips and tactics because we want to learn them, and mm -hmm. we know a lot of people still want to learn these things. But it's like we, like if we're talking to a guest, and they're like, okay, like we want to cover these topics, and we start learning some tips and ta tactics of what they do. But then we're like, well, how'd your season go? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. We want to hear about your season. Like, oh, you shot a buck or, oh, you got some dough down. Like, tell us about it. Mm -hmm. Like, we want to hear a story. Or, you know, hey, you posted this three months ago about maybe a fish you caught that looked really nice, like a personal best. We want to hear the story about it. Mm -hmm. That's that's the one thing that sets us apart. Like, we try, we we want to hear the stories. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like the main thing that we do here at bcpa that's the back that's the backbone of the podcast like we started with the stories and we're still going with the stories but yes you're right there's going to be sprinkles of tips and tactics there might be a few episodes of those you know to e-scout or to boots on the ground scouting you know sign to look for but like 
there's a good, I'd say 90% of it is going to be the stories, going to be how they got into hunting, going to be that. I think one thing that I want to incorporate more is that camp, camp, camp life, you know, and yep. we'll talk more about that off air. Cause I don't really, this, it's a copycat thing and I don't want people stealing stuff and you know, yeah, we'll talk more yeah. about that, but it's going to be, there's going to be a new twist. Um, I think after the episodes that we have already pre-planned to come out, there's going to be a little bit of a twist and I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, in my mind, if we can make it work, we'll make it work, but it, it's yeah. going to be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, dude, I'm, I'm right there with you. Like it's, it's a hundred percent the stories. Um, I think the thing that makes us stand out the most is like, you see, you see bigger companies, you see a lot of, um, well-known killers, put it that way, starting a podcast and they get, you know, they get more push because they can kill, get on big buck and because they have more time to get on big buck, you know, or they're mm-hmm. just in a big buck state, put it that way. Um, but us, we're just average guys. Like we're average guys who want to hear stories, who have full-time jobs that do not work in the industry. Like we have, the only connection we have to the industry is the people that we're partnered with of how we got into the industry. And mm-hmm. even that, I don't really consider that we're in the industry. <laughs> I just think we're two yeah. dudes like just that enjoy the outdoors. Yeah. And I think it's <laughs> not even like, cause like the, all the people that we are partnered with through the mm-hmm. podcast, it's like, it's not just like a, a business, like, yeah, we're partnered with them. We mm-hmm. get product. You know? It's like, no, like we know these people, with these people on, on a personal level. Yep. Yep. Like we see each other out in public, like, Hey, what's up? How's it going? How's the family? How you doing? Like, mm-hmm. Hey, this is, you know, yeah. You don't see that a lot mm-hmm. in, in the, the business side of things. It's just all strict to business down. It's like, no, like we're, we have a community. We want to grow a community and that's, that's, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Our, our, the backbone is that story, the community, the relationships. I think those are the things that we are built on here at the BCPA, the Backcountry PA podcast. If no one knows what BCPA is, uh, I, I would hope. I, I would feel hope. like we have to do something with BS, BCPA. Like we have to make something for it, like so people know that it's, you know, we have to, we'll, we can brainstorm that um, for maybe a shirt idea or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so those are the three you had, right? Yeah. I mean, okay. season goals, but yeah. this. So, you know what? I just thought of this. We're not going to even touch on the negative. We're going to just focus on the positive. So, what are the what are the positive things, like the positive things that have come from this? I mean, we kind of touched on them, sprinkled in what we just talked about. But, like, for mm-hmm. you, uh, what are, like, the, like, points? What are the p- positive points that have come from this for you? Um, <clears throat> I would say a, a – deeper connection with mother nature. Mm-hmm. Um, I did like being outside, even, you know, growing up playing outside all the time. I mean, I was in boy scouts, I'm an Eagle scout. So it's like, I was always outside, outside doing mm-hmm. something. And then growing up just with, prior to the podcast, I, I didn't I hunted a few times for small game, went out for rifle for literally maybe two or th- three days was pushing it. Mm-hmm. Right. And then that was it. We were done. Now it's like, I find this, this love for the outdoors that I didn't know I could actually have mm-hmm. through the podcast with the fishing and the hunting more, I'm hunting more. I and mean, I don't overdo it. Cause that's the one thing I right. never wanted to do is I never wanted to feel burnt out mm-hmm. or feel it was a chore. Right. And I don't think I think one year I definitely felt a little a little pressure. Mm-hmm. A couple of years ago I felt some pressure. Felt was like, oh my god, like I just don't want to. Yeah, I don't really want to be here right now. So I had to take a step back and re fall in love with this. Mm-hmm. That, but I think that is one of the biggest positives for me is that that newfound love for just Mother Nature. Yeah, I I I agree with that, and I think for me for the positive, it's 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 an escape from like the day-to-day, the mundane day-to-day life of like going to work, waking up, you know, doing all that kind of stuff, like doing stuff around the house. Like I love mowing. I love doing that, but like there's stuff around the house. I don't necessarily always want to do, you know, it's like, I would love to just, and this is like this, the podcast kind of that escape from that. So like, it's like, 
yeah, we, we might not be in the woods all the time. We might not be hunting all the time. We might not be going out of state all the time or going fishing all the time or small game hunting or trapping or whatever. But we have this escape where it's like we can come to the studio. If you don't work, we have a few beers. And we're, we're able to talk to people from further away that we probably never would have talked to before. And it's like that <laughs> escape where we're, we're building these connections and it, it's just, it takes you out of the everyday life. I think that's the big thing for me is like, it gives me an escape, gives me a place to kind of decompress. Like, because yep. if it wasn't for the podcast, I mean, I'll be honest, like I probably would be, I probably playing Xbox or doing that kind of stuff all the time. Like, it's like, I don't, it, it would, I wouldn't be out scouting as much. Wouldn't be out in the woods as much. Like it's healthy. It's a healthy thing to be doing because you're out there and you're exercising and you're putting boots on the ground and you're exploring. That's, that's the positive for me. Yep. I mean, I've always felt that even growing up, like going up to the cabin, mm -hmm. up going to the cabin, still yep. do. Obviously. Yeah. I, I, I go every weekend if I could. Right. Yep. Like going, it was like you said, it was, it's literally an ex escape from reality. Mm -hmm. I have no worries up there. I don't got to worry. I got nothing going on. I got nothing going on up here. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're good go. like any work that needs done up there, it mm -hmm. doesn't take wrong. I'll be sweating like there's no tomorrow, and I'll be sore by the next day when I'm working up there, but I never mm -hmm. consider it work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, that's a great way to look at it. I think – um, if people can't like do their own podcast, it is hard. It's, it's a hard thing to do. Um, man, just find your escape, find, get out there and just like find your, your escape from reality or your, where you decompress, make it healthy, make it a healthy decompression. Um, now that's the key. Yeah. I think the, the big thing, uh, let's the appreciation, like there's, there's a mm -hmm. lot of people to thank out there, obviously for sport, for listening. I think, um, we're not going to go through all the names, obviously, but like, for, a lot of names. yeah, for everyone who's come on the podcast, 150 plus episodes of guests. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many actual guests we've had on, but I think it's a hundred, it's at least 150 plus. Um, but I, I just from the bottom of my heart, just thank you guys so much for like, just coming on the podcast, coming, talking to us and sharing your knowledge, sharing your stories, your experiences, um, everything that you guys have done um maybe you guys will come back on um who knows there's, there's a lot of people out there that that we want personally to share their stories and to share you know, their knowledge and you know have you know everyone everyone deserves to be in the limelight for a little bit so like if we're a podcast that can offer some no-name person or you know someone who has never been on a podcast the opportunity to be in the limelight for a little bit like they deserve that because I think everyone deserves a little bit of time to shine in today's world. Absolutely. Absolutely. I thoroughly enjoy talking to everyone, you know, that comes on hearing the story. I mean, there was a time and period where you actually had to like, Hey, like you need to talk. Cause I would just sit there and be like, just, <laughs> yes. just a little fun. just taking it all in. And then I, I'm, I'm a happy camper. Just yep. one sitting there listening. I was like, Oh wait, shit. I'm, I'm a host of the podcast. I actually have to ask questions. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just letting you talk. Go right ahead. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it just, I love, like I said, just hearing everyone tell their stories mm -hmm. and learning everything from everyone. It's just, and then the, I mean, I have to support like people mm -hmm. that always share things on social media, people that will listen to it, you know, each and every week, you know, when we drop an episode on Mondays um, and the feedback you know, mm -hmm. constructive criticism is always appreciated. You know, we want to we want to keep growing and improving for you guys. You know, because if well, we don't improve, then well, you're not going to listen. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We want we want you to listen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, season goals. We'll end with season goals. So, what is your goal for this season? Uh, In the White tag. Tail Woods, fill one tag. Just fill it. Just I don't care which one. Yeah. Any tag. I would love to get both. Buck and I've never doubled up. Yeah. So that would be great if I could. Um, I have no preference. So I don't really care. But uh -huh. if I fill a tag, I'm happy. Um, I would like to get a pheasant this year. That's a pain. I have to. I have to go with someone. To uh -huh. I need someone to just like jump them. 
Yep. It's not there. I don't have a dog. I don't really know anyone that has a dog. Yeah. So I have a dog, so I, yeah. I don't know. Hey, if anyone has a hunting dog wants to go hunting with me, <laughs> here's here we go. Here's my here's the application. Phil. Yeah. Fill, in fill it dog. out. <laughs> Throwing it out there. I'd love to do that, or even rabbit hunting. Yep. Anything along those lines. Um, I'd like to do that. I want to get I want to get my first red fox. Okay. There's plenty of them up there. Up mm-hmm. at the cabin, so I'm sure I could possibly get one. Mm-hmm. Plus, I need predator control anyway up there. Right. Um, but getting one mounted, like it'd be my first one. Yeah. But I would love to get a fox mounted. I would get. I really want to get a grouse mounted though. Okay. They're beautiful. But I shot one last year, which was the first one I shot in like 15 years. Yeah. Or something like that. I don't know why I didn't get it mounted. I think it was just like I just want to eat it. I was yeah. happy. Yeah. Uh, but. If I get another one next year, I I want to get it mounted with the whole the wings spread out and everything. Yeah, I need I need some more mounts in there. I have a black squirrel, and my wife doesn't even let me display that in places that she goes frequently because she thinks it's going to come alive and eat her face. Yeah, so I don't. There, we have another we have another joke about that that actually will be on the episode after this with Jacob Emery. So, yeah, <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned for that one. Um, yeah. yeah, I think. My prediction for you, and I want you to give a prediction for me then. My prediction for you is I think that week you're taking off for deer camp, which we talk about that in this, after this part here in this episode. um, I think you're going to get a buck down in that time frame. I think you're going to get a buck down. Then I think you're going to get a doe down, down here locally. Oh, down here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's my probably scout down here then huh maybe a little bit just There's a little bit little east guy I, yeah. I have some spots yeah so my season goal is i want to shoot i want to get a buck or a doe down with the compound bow that is my that's my goal like i have really no other goals other than that is like i want to get a buck or a doe down with the compound and i should have shot that seven point two years ago with the compound you will beat yourself up over that buck yep. for the rest of life <laughs> yep yep and that's I, I i now know i will i'm not going to say i'm going to let nothing pass but i'm going to be smarter about it like especially with the bow it's like if it was my first deer ever shot with the bow it needs to be i need to take it because i just need to get it under my belt like ryan glitzky always has said it's always about the deer and get deer underneath your belt that's the big thing that's how you're going to get be able to get possibly on a bigger buck um but that was that's that's really it. Okay, predictions. Hmm. Yep. My prediction is that you're going to fall in love with squirrel hunting, and we're going to go. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> let's see here. Predictions. I would say. Oh man, because like you're. I mean, you, you're you're Mr. Whitetail Hunter here mm-hmm. between between you and me mm-hmm. right so you're you're on them more than i am at you know when it comes to this kind of stuff so i don't want to say it's going to be later in the year but i feel like i don't know like i'm just getting that good a good vibe about that hunting camp week yeah but i think if we go say you don't fill a buck tag until that time okay okay yep you'll probably get, some, you'll probably get a doe or two i could see it okay right? yeah um you plan on getting a doe tag at your parents? One up there, um, one in. I actually wrote this down because I think we, I think we talk about it in the next, the next part here. Which you um, wanted, yeah. So it's I got two G, four C, five B, and four D. Those are what I'm going to be going for. So four doe tags altogether. Okay. Mm, where do you plan on hunting opening day? Zone. Five? Opening day, uh, archery. Yeah, dude. I don't know. It depends. It depends. It, it, it'll it depend. Like if I can make it up to my parents camp opening day, I think I might go up there just because I know, but then that kind of sucks. Like I'm in that, I'm that little back and forth right now. It's like, do I save my buck tag for the rut up there? Or do I like, <laughs> do I try and go after a buck early? I, it's, I, I don't know where I'm going opening day, to be honest. Okay. This is what I'm thinking. You're probably going to end up, something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You're gonna end up hunting local. You get a doe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll you'll get a doe in the first two weeks of October. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm gonna say 
for some dumb reason, you're not going to make it up to your parents' camp prior uh-huh. to the our mini rutcation, if you right. will. Yep. Um, and then at, at the rutcation, you are going to shoot a dandy of a buck. Okay. And it's going to be he's going to be walking in to a scrape. Okay. All right. And set up in the saddle. Yep. Twenty eight yards away. <laughs> okay. Being very specific here. Yep. Twenty eight yards away. Dandy of a buck walking in. He's gonna lift his head, look at you. Thwack. He's gonna run sixty three yards. Drop. Wow. That's my prediction. Wow. I yep. I hope that is right. <laughs> I jeez. I hope it. If it is. Bro, I'm playing the lottery. I should have, I should have, instead of just the audio, I should have recorded this video. So I can... That would have been perfect. <laughs> oh, well, you know, uh, you live and learn, right? Next, uh, at 300, we'll do that. How about that? <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. We'll do a video and audio for 300. Yeah, yeah there we go. It's just, we'll make it a lot easier for 300. We'll make one single episode instead of three different ones. So that way it's a lot easier for. <laughs> for... Yes. And then rifle season. Rifle season, I plan on going to my parents. Okay. Well, then you'll then you'll fill your doe tag there then. Okay. Okay. And then I'll I'll fill mine. Yeah. There we go. Doesn't be weird. Like if I like part of me is like I don't want to fill my tags. Yeah. Like all of my tags in archery season. Yeah. Like I want to go to my cabin for mm-hmm. rifle. Yep. I was like, but if like my dad doesn't fill his tags, even though I am, I'm still going. Yeah. I just want to. I like. I'll. I'll scout. I'll take the rifle out with me. Yeah. Because like maybe I'll see a coyote. I don't yeah. know. You never know up there. Yeah. Exactly. I'll, I'll go scout. Like yeah. yeah, I can hunt here next year. Yeah. There you go. Um. Yeah, man. It's been awesome doing 200 episodes with you so far. Um. Yeah. Let's uh. Let's keep it going. 200 more. We were talking about deer camp. We decided what. Right now, we kind of decided when deer camp's going to be. So I was like, hey, let's just let's just make the mics hot and just see what. See what happens, you know? See where life takes like, us. Like um, um, vomit or lava of the mouth. I don't know what they call it, what the kids call it nowadays. I don't know. I don't know. Shit and facts. <laughs> Shit and facts. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that was good I like that. That's a different yeah. one. Um, so we were talking about deer camp. Uh, right now we've decided on that three-day weekend, uh, mm-hmm. which you sadly won't be able to do the whole thing. Which now I'm like, man, we should try and figure out something where it's, you can do the whole thing. Cause, and I can take off and yeah. make it a little. Yeah. So if, like if we do, because right now it's, um, what did I say, November 15th to the 17th is what we, right now, cold right now. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what we decided on. But it could change. It could be a week before, which if we do a week before, that's pure, that's, that's prime time rut time frame. That if we do true. a week before. Oh. Or we can do. I don't really want to do Halloween because of my daughter. Um, yeah, I mean, if we do a week before, we could do like a Thursday to a Saturday or something like that. Like we mm-hmm. could do something where you're able to get off a Thursday. And I can take off. Yeah, and then you could hunt, we can hunt well, Thursday. I'll take off Wednesday too. Well, yeah, I, I would head up Friday, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday night. I'd probably head up Wednesday night then. Oh, yeah, same. And then, um, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll be ready to go. <laughs> you'll be sleeping. In the, I'll wake up and you'll be already in the camper. Yep, and you'll be like, "Hey, when are we leaving? When are we leaving?" It's like, "Jesus, dude, I just woke up. Let me get my coffee." <laughs> yeah, come on. I had my coffee before I came over here. Good goodness, <laughs> you ready come out go. with a coffee cup in your hand it's from just... the camper that's not even like plugged in. Nothing's going on, and it's, it's just, hot. It's hot. <laughs> You're like, "What the hell's going on?" What is, what, where'd you make this? I got a jet boil. Yeah. Um, Started a so, fire. In the- <laughs> so we could do that, and that would be, um, <coughs> what weekend would that even be? That would be, that would be like November, oh God, November 7th to the, like the 9th. Mm. That's like pure rut, and it's like, that's man. prime. Yeah, that's That's when time. the big boys come around my cabin, too. That's like, <laughs> should we go where we said, or should we go up to Ethan's cabin? I <laughs> know, uh, because if if uh, <clears throat> everything holds true to the last, what, three, four years, mm-hmm. there will be three, at least, historically, there will be mm-hmm. at least three shooter buck okay. coming around the property. Yeah. but and Is that when you uh, had that one? 
that came up there that you had a shot at, or was that earlier? Yeah, that was November. I took off last year, November fifth through mm-hmm. the twelfth, okay. Sunday to Sunday, okay. and so the first so Monday, so November sixth okay. is when he strolled through. Okay, and we we had two of them mm-hmm. showing up multiple nights after that, but again, eight o'clock, yeah, eight thirty at night. So they're around, mm. but they're not right there. But that's should, the, and that's the only time we see them at. Should we at night. should we get some people on the phone right now? Should I call Drew and see what he thinks? Yes. You Why think, not? Think <laughs> Why not? Why not? All right. You, can, you don't have to give out a fake number this time. No, I have his personal. number. <laughs> you have his actual I can number. Do that. See if he answers. Yes, he's probably like, wait. Don't you have an episode right now? I'll put him on speaker. There you go. On our first call in for the day. <laughs> what was the weekend? November seventh. Potential. Yeah. The other weekend. Yeah. You know, like he's not going to answer. Watch. He's not going to answer. Probably not. He's not going to answer it. Big. Like, why is this? Why is this guy calling me? If he doesn't answer, we'll call Ed. Seventh through the ninth. Yeah, keep that Thursday, phone open. Thursday to Saturday. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That's up at your cabin would be. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Because I have two locations. Hi, this is Drew with Ink Landscaping. Sorry, I couldn't get to the oh. phone. Well, now we're just going to make fun of you, now Drew, we're the whole just time. Gonna, Now we're just going to call Ed. <laughs> and Ed's probably not going to no. answer. That man's making coffee right now. Or he's sleeping and going to work. I don't know. One of the two. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's a busy dude. It's funny because, like, I'll see him post on Instagram. Yeah. I'm at lunch at 4 o'clock in the morning, and he's just, like, waking up, getting ready to go. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I thought he answered for a second. Why does that sound, like, not so loud? So quiet. He's not going to answer either. He's not either. No one answers. No one answers. Slack and it's... Who would I call next? Who would I call next? Your call has been forwarded to voicemail. Man. Wow. I'm going to make fun of wow. you too now, Ed. Who who should I call next? I don't know. I don't know people. Should I call Jimmy? From Drawback? Jimmy. Yes. Should I call him? I don't know. He's moving boulders. He might be... That was <laughs> such clickbait. <laughs> Bastard. Hey, you got to do it for the single moms, man. Yeah, the single moms. He's not going to answer either. Watch. No, he's probably taking a nap, too. He worked hard. To, yeah. Freaking probably. bums. Freaking bums. No one, no one I'm going to make fun of everybody. No one answers the phone anymore. What's uh, up with that? Your call has been See? No one... An- no, wow. Every, uh, episode uh, 200 is just going to be a roast session of everyone that doesn't he, answer the phone. He just texted me saying, give me a sec. Give he's me. probably in the bathroom right now. Yep. I'm not going to say what he's doing. Okay, so... Pooping. So right now... Okay. November 5th is election day. Oh. So Okay, so November 5th... No, sorry. Oh. That's a Tuesday. So November 7th... <laughs> Is a Thursday. November 7th, Thursday. Through the 9th. Stay to November 9th. Well, I mean, we can come on the 10th. 9th. Because we'll probably end up shooting, it, shooting a deer on the 9th, and then right. it'll go into Cause the I, time. Because there's a spot that I would love to get to <coughs> of your cabin that I've told you about numerous times that I will not tell you about. Remember that spot? You don't remember that spot because I never told you about that spot. I was going to say, it's not the one that's f- four miles deep. Actually, Jimmy has a, has a cabin up there now, too. Yeah. Yeah, so he doesn't have to stay at your cabin. He could stay at his cabin. There you go. And we could come go do that. We can make it happen. Yeah. We can happen. So then, okay, so... I mean, mine's probably better, but... We, you know. Well, obviously, <laughs> clearly, because it's already like we just walk right to Gamelands. There's oh, State yeah. Forest from near your house. Oh, yeah, it's right your there. cabin. I mean, yeah. that would be ideal. Perfect. That's, that's legit camp right there. Yeah, plus that's I legit have... deer camp. Last year, there were two... Two legal buck up on top of the mountain that I had on camera. That on top I, of the mountain, like you mean, like in front of your cabin? Oh no, 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 no mean? Like driving back, driving back, nine miles driving. Remember that one we saw when we were going to my cabin? That one across the road, ran across the road. Like it was during mm-hmm. late season when we took that my tree stand over to my cabin. Remember that? Mm-hmm. And that buck ran across in front of us. Yeah, were you, was that? Was I with you? I had so or was many... that someone else? Was that me and my dad? I had so many random encounters with deer with you. It kind of gets blurry at this point. Because I know he he was big. I forget it. It was, I, it was during the day though. Like I don't. Yeah. I don't know if it was during arch season or what. Um, but yeah, I think I think that would be a better better time frame to go up. Mm-hmm. Because one, I think it would work better for you because you don't have to worry about it. 
Yeah. You can get off. Um, we could still go to your cabin yep. if you wanted to go to your cabin, or we could go to where I where I yep. was originally planning on going. Yeah. Um, so whichever. I think going to your cabin would be pretty cool because that's legit camp, deer camp. Like we ha- yeah. we'd have a meat pole, and I let me tell you what, yeah. I am loving these meat pole pictures. Oh my god, they're out. awesome! Like I'm like <laughs> looking at these, I'm like I'm getting nostalgic. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Like now I want to go find like uh, actually, oh, the photo album. I want to see because I know me and my dad have a bunch of like garage pictures. Like there's one on a clothesline, but it's already scun out. Yeah. So like that one doesn't really count, I don't think. Um, cornfield in the back of me, I mean, classic, classic bow in hand. Oh yeah. The aluminum, the aluminum arrows. Yep. Like the mullet, the old school, the horses hat. Yes. The old school horses hat. Like what happened to horses hats? I don't. Oh, yeah. The tree. Oh, hanging on. I mean, a tree. that's that's my favorite one right there. Um, oh, yeah, the mind. garage pictures. Garage pictures right there. I mean, it, it's just epic. I was like, I don't, you know. Hear, I, don't I don't know. know. I just saw the air kick on. I was like, oh, I wonder if you can hear that. No, I think we're good. Yeah, Dude. I mean, you, you can't go wrong with a good tree, uh, rafters. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, the one with the saddle platform from Justin. Yeah. That was freaking sick. I like that. Um, like the, the skid steer. Mm-hmm. Doing that one, like you, you've seen that. Like, hope my mom literally put my jacket on, my orange vest on, just to go out there and take a picture. And my sister put on her camo jacket just to get a picture. Like, yep, freaking epic. Like, my sister is a vegan now, so like, I can be like, hey, remember this? Remember this? That probably turned her vegan. <laughs> yeah, probably did. Scarred her for life. There was her moment. Yeah. <laughs> this this one right here is classic. I said it was a. I guess I was saying it was six. My dad said it was a seven point. Clearly a six point. Both throwing up different numbers in your hands. Yeah. Like we're gang members or something like that. I mean, that one there, that that was out in Mount Gretna, dude. Oh, that's a nice one. I mean, that was close to where those two were found. Yeah. Those two deadheads. I think there's some big ones. There's some big boys out there. Well, I think... Hiding. Oh, that's the picture I wanted to find. Oh, uh, the I, big I tree. Couldn't, I couldn't find it, yeah. Like, that's a staple of every camp, right? I think you have to have a big tree Yeah. to hang a deer in. Like, oh. you can't have little... Bitch ass trees. No, you can't have bitch ass trees. No, we have to have big ones. Yeah. Big trees to hang big deer. Yeah, exactly. Watch all three of them are gonna call me back at once. Oh yeah, hundred like, percent. Hey, let me want? get let me get you on a conference call here. Yeah, conference call. Three way. Three hey, way call. Whoa, whoa. Wait. Three way. Okay, so all right. all right, so that see, I think we have to figure this out, right? Because yeah. I want to get a doe tag. Like I. Oh, hundred percent. If if there's <laughs> if there's like we'll be fighting for a doe tag for two G. Yeah, I mean that's oh my gosh. And that's a headache. Well, yeah, because I mean, like, I've been lucky the last several years of getting one, so mm-hmm. uh, we'll see how it works out. I mean, we get early uh, early pick here this year. That, that's what we were looking at right here was doe tags before we decided to call people and decide on this what date. But so I don't know what this pre qualified round is. We're on the game commission website right now. We're looking at this. Let's see what it says. Um, pre qualified rounds start June seventeenth, twenty twenty four, at eight a.m. online, obviously, which. Take it how you want to. Uh, license available in round, in round, resident and non-resident landowner, antlers, deer, one license per qualified acreage. Whoa. One license per qualifying acreage. What's the qualifying acreage? I don't know. Agent issuing in round, participating county treasurer's office. Uh, so that's for landowners, looks like. Yeah. So Ju- June 17th is for landowners. I... I landowner, yeah. I'm not even sure this episode 200 will come out this time. Um, yeah, it might be after this. So this you point. might have already got your first round. So congratulations to all the landowners uh, on June seventeenth, twenty twenty four, who <laughs> got their toe tags. Yes, per lip, per qualifying acreage. Pretty exciting there. Uh, now this is the this is the the confusing confusion confusing one uh, that's taking place this year is um, the first round WMU's one B two G and three A only starts June twenty fourth. 2024 at 8 a.m. <coughs> yep. Ethan, you want to take that one away? Yeah, so... 
Yeah, residents. Is it resident? Yeah, resident. It's only resident, Yeah, right? it's only resident, which oh, okay. is actually nice. Oh, yeah, no. It's nice. Don't, we don't need them non-residents. Yeah, um, yeah this, is a, this is new for this year because yeah. it would, everything was together. But I think with all of the the problems that they had last year going online for the first time, and they understand that these certain WMUs, 1B, 3A, and 2G, sell out very, very quickly. There's a limited amount. Like, there's obviously a limited amount of everyone, but yeah, these um, ones are, are slim pickings. So they figured, you know what, let's just have these three go first to, A, help with online traffic. So there's mm-hmm. not as many people compared to everyone at once. Mm-hmm. I'm and trying then, to pull up the numbers right now. And then we'll be okay. But I'm... I'm all right. So, well, at, I, oh, this all sold out. Look at that. All but one. Yeah. Everything's sold out. Because, like, look when it's sold out. Oh, it's 2024. 2G, uh, 2G sold out 628. 628, 2023. June 28th. And it went on sale, was, what, the 27th, 28th? Yeah. Yeah, day after. And there was 3,500 that year, which actually is a lot. Because when I first started going up, there was 26. Yep. I and that was 2,000. Oh, that was. Yeah. That yep. was a long time. And that was before they combined yep. the two WMUs together. Yep. So I think it even went up from this this year. Yeah, I, think I think it's, it's like 37,000. 37, 37, yeah. Which is Which, nice. okay, so, okay, if it's if it opens June 1st, or when was that? Ju- June 24th, it opens, right? Yeah. If it opens June 24th, and there's 37,000 by June with the 20th, only residents. By June 25th. Yeah. And that might be pushing it. Yeah. By June 25th, it's sold out. Guarantee it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I. Yeah, so we have to figure this out. We have to figure out if we're going up to your camp or my camp. For this. Pulling the camper somewhere. Whatever. Like, yeah. it has to be. We have to decide it. We have to get it written in stone. We have to. Because how far out it is right now, I can get it worked out with my wife where it's like, okay, I'm going up these dates mm-hmm. to get it done. Um, so. Same. It's, yeah, it, it's easy to do because it, it's so far out right now. It's like, how many months is that out? That's seven months? Probably more than six. that. Six. Six months. Okay, six so months. six months out, she has plenty of time to put in for that week mm-hmm. off or time off, whatever. Yep. Um, so we can do that. I'm down with that. Um, I just think we got to get others' opinions. That's why we got to call people. We mm-hmm. got to call people back. on the pod. Yeah. Um, put them on the spot. Yeah. So that's that's a real possibility right there. Uh, and then the real fun begins June yeah. 27th. Yeah, June 27th is all the rounds then. So three days afterwards, which is kind of funny. That's just three days. But I guess, you know, open the floodgates first because everyone wants those coveted tags first. Yep. Um, yeah, so June 27th is when everything else opens at 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. So they can get everything for residents only. And then round two... Starts July twenty sixth, twenty second. It's like a whole month later. Yeah, it's it's Jeez. yeah. Residents and non-resident aliens deer license, resident disabled veteran aliens deer license, uh, issuing agents. Obviously, you go online to do it, or you can go to. I don't even think <coughs> is there an option to go to the counter anymore. Yeah, if the you county go. treasurer. Yeah. yeah, or if you go to. Well, no, no. It says get... available Pennsylvania Gate Commission officers and participating county treasurer office. Mm-hmm. Residents, disabled veteran aliens, deal license, and resident armed forces are the only ones that can go to the county treasurers. Yeah. So we, as um, just regular hunters, can't do that. We yeah. have to buy online or go to like um, Kinsey's or something. I thought that was only for the last round. I think it's only for the last round now. Did they change it? Yeah. Issuing agents in a round. Oh, and issuing agents. So, yeah. I'd say you're good. Oh, and it, okay. yeah. and all okay. I'd say we're okay. Yeah, so you, I guess we're good there. So then I think what I'll do if we do go up to yours, I got obviously two G first. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to get four D, and then I'm going to five B, and then I'm well no, I might do four D, and then um, four C, and then five B. Five B takes a while to sell out. It did. It sold out second round last year though. Did it? Yeah. Because I tried to, I wanted to get it second round. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll wait 
because it's still online was stupid. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'll just get it tonight at work or something. And yeah. it was sold out. So 4C has 3,200, 32,000. Um, still 4D has 77. And it's sold out still. Thousand. And it's sold out September 1st. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about that. No. I would I would honestly go with 5B has 60,000. That sold off August 14th. Um, looks like 4C sold out July 22nd, the second round. Yep. So I think I'll, I'll do that. I'll do 2G, 4C, 5B, 4D. There you go. Does that sound like a good idea to you? That sounds good. Because, I mean, you look at how late that sold out of September 1st. Yeah. I can't really see that going. Um, and you know what? If I don't get a, uh, a doe tag in 4D, so be it. So be you it. You know, like I'll, if I have if I have a buck tag come that season, I'll be able to go uh, muzzler hunting. But the thing is, and this is this is new, so that, that rifle season, that extended rifle season now. Oh, yeah. Is in that area now. It's in good. 4D. So, like. And that's like, for antlerless, right? Only? Only antlerless. Which I can see a lot of issues coming from that. Well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of uh, drop mm. antler buckshot. Mm. Well, not just that. I think people are going to shoot bucks just to shoot bucks because, like, I have this rifle because that's kind of what hunting is now. It's, like, op- opportunistic mm-hmm. hunting. So, like, they're going to be out there with a rifle and still shoot the buck just because, like, oh, I have a buck tag. Why can't I shoot this buck? Yeah. That's what a lot of people are going to do. Um, but also the dropped antler bucks. I think the... There will be quite a few shots yeah, for sure. Yeah, there will. In the year. Yeah. Some of them that'll get shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. I mean, I'm curious a, also how many people are actually going to go out, though, that late. Because you never see any... I, mean, I personally, I never see anyone really out in the late general late season. Mm, oh, no. I, I ran into... I could probably count on one hand how many people I ran into in, yeah. in that time. Um, but... I will say, if it's an extended rifle season up there, that takes a place of flintlock for two weeks. I yeah. can see people going out because that yeah. area is heavy Amish. Yeah. And if the Amish know that there's an extended rifle season in, don't, you best be don't betting tell them. they're going to be out there. <laughs> don't tell them. So, yeah, I can see them doing that. Um, so that's kind of my plan. I'm, I think that's my that's that's my. Um, I got to write that down because I'm going to forget what I just said. I'm yeah. going to forget that whole thing of what I. So I'm going to do 2G. Two G first. Then I said I'm gonna get four C four C second. Then I'm gonna do five B third. And then I'm gonna do four D fourth. And I mean vice versa. So like if five B sold out third, then I'm gonna go four D. Yeah. Like it's just because I mean there's in five B there's sixty thousand that probably went up by two thousand. Yeah, they um, went up this year. Four D probably went up by two thousand, even though they they extended that rifle season. So you think that actually would go down, but since they sold out, because that's how that's how they increase the tag numbers. Is like when they sell out, they increase the tag numbers. Sell out until yeah. How many are filled and yeah? Well, what they say are filled. <laughs> Drew said he's at dinner with the family. Okay, I'm that's not going to text back. That's fair. Oh my funny. Goodness. Sorry, Drew. Sorry. Who um, who eats? It's eight o'clock. <laughs> it's eight o'clock at night. Who eats at eight o'clock at night? We'll make funny now. But that's okay. I'm gonna text back. Wanted to chat about Deer Camp. Dates may be changing. And wanted your opinion. Opinion. Yeah, I think I'll do 2G, obviously, P-S, first. Oh, P.S. Live on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, yeah. 2G will be first for me, obviously. Yep. It, it's, mm-hmm. it, no matter where I hunt, 2G is always first. Yep. Sure. Um, I'll probably go 5B second. Mm-hmm. Just 2G is huge, too. Like, why is it only yeah. 3,700? 3,700. It's because they added the... Well, I mean, it's only went up to thirty-seven thousand just right. because it. They added. I don't elk, even remember what it elk was. And Cameron, yeah, part of Elk Cameron McKean. Mm-hmm. It's left half of Clearfield. Yep. Top left. Yep. Um, but yeah, even that, it's like. I don't know because he went up when I went up. Bereft, like I didn't see shit. Mm-hmm. 
like gear wise. Like I know there's I know there's deer there. Mm-hmm. I know there's deer two G. Oh yeah. So I just, they just weren't where where I was. Right. I yeah. wasn't in the right spot. At mm-hmm. least the right ones because I had mm-hmm. a spike. That was about it. Yeah. And I think a doe. Yeah. Blew at me. I have no idea. It was Dude. blown for like ten minutes straight. Well, that's the crazy thing about like when you're up there in two G, you kind of like you forget that you're not down here because deer up there communicate like crazy because of how vast that area is. Mm-hmm. I mean, because like when I was up there for rifle with you and your dad, mm-hmm. when you got the the doe down. Right. And I was in the saddle and I was in the pines. And it was raining. So like I, just, I say the, the, the pines because I was like, you know, I don't want to get soaked or well, anything yeah. like that. Like I still got soaked obviously. Yeah. But like while I was sitting there, a guy walked through the clear cut that was to my left. Mm-hmm. And then be like a little bit after that, I heard a grunt behind me Mm -hmm. and I was like, I never heard a grunt before. So I was like, that's probably some guy just grunt, you know, just just grunt. And then when I got down, I see like fresh scrapes and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, shit, there was actually a buck right here. Yeah. Like literally like there was because where I was set up, like I couldn't see down where that scrape was. So like it was like a little bowl, (coughs) but there, I mean, so many scrapes right there. Like that, I was the crazy, like up there, they communicate with those scrapes and they communicate with those, the, the vocal cues. Mm-hmm. And that's a cool part. Like, that's why I loved it up there so much. And I still love it. Like, like yeah. the Everyday Outdoorsman, their intro, where it's like, once you step foot in there, oh my gosh, you yeah. always want to come back. I listened to that. Well, I mean, I was listening to the episode yeah. and I was like, oh man, that is, that's the cabin. Yeah. Like, I'm just picturing, I can literally picture the valley. Well, he has a cabin in Potter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's I think he knows. He knows. He knows where you are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We talked about it. Oh, did you? Yeah. Darn it. <laughs> Gosh darn it. <laughs> but yes, I was like, <clears throat> I can picture everything right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. I mean, the cabins, the, yeah, it's just a great area. And I think that's why it'd be, it'd be an awesome place to do a deer camp at. Cause mm-hmm. it's the, the pure deer camp vibes up there. You sit around the yeah. campfire. Yep. We can have a campfire. We can have some beers. We can do all that kind of stuff. Drew text back. He said, can I call in 20? I will say absolutely. Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a great idea. But back to what you're talking about. I think you were talking about um, the, the the tags. And you were talking about rifle season up there, not seeing anyone. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, nothing. I mean, I saw... I could have shot a doe, but you know, it was a little thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I've been there. And I was like, I should have done it. But no. Um, Hindsight's twenty twenty though. Exactly. You don't think anything. It was the last day that we were mm-hmm. staying. But um, that was, it was week on... you were up there for a rifle or was that a weekend? Um, I took off the week. So we stayed till Tuesday. Mm-hmm. You know, went up Friday okay. afternoon, I think. Or something like that, yeah. and then stayed till Tuesday. I had off the whole week, but we only stayed till like Tuesday, and mm-hmm. then came home. Um, but yeah, like even coming home, like I saw someone that I knew from. Oh, forgot from, if ooh. the camera was recording or not. Forgot yes. if I pressed it. Oh, it's, it is. I okay. see the red dot. <laughs> I hope so. You clapped at it and everything. I did. I did. <laughs> um, but I mean, I ran even ran into someone that we knew from high school mm. coming home. Mm-hmm. Um, Clark, football. He was a year older than us. Oh, that guy. Yeah. 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 So he has a cabin somewhere up there. Mm, okay. Um, and he's like, dude, no one saw shit. And I was like, okay, good. I'm not the only one. We're good. We're okay. But yeah, up there, like you got to, you if work. you're hunting the woods, you got to walk. And right that's, that's like, you why, have to walk. And that's why it's so exciting to do archery up there. A deer camp archery hunt up there yeah, would be no so idea. exciting. Yeah. Because the odds of a deer, like just walking in, mm-hmm. in within 25 mm-hmm. yards, it's like, oh shit. Like, how did this happen? Yeah. Like, you don't expect that. And the things you see up there, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, Dude, yeah. what's going on? Right. I mean, there's deer now, because I'm getting pictures now every day mm-hmm. of doe coming through, like grazing on the food plot and everything, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. I'm right. happy as can be. But I know from past experience, come archery season, mm-hmm. those dickheads are going to be gone. Yep. And I'm going to have no idea where they go. Yep. I have to figure that out. I'm like, they can't go that far. They're doe. Don't, yep. don't. Leave, leave. Yeah, no, the doe are creatures of pure deer. Doe are creatures of habit. Buck are not. Buck, no. like the only time buck are like creatures of habit is like when the rut comes around. Yeah. It's like they know what, because they know a doe comes in. So like. Yeah, that's why I get the big ones every year because right. the doe are in the area. So it's like, 
I just got to figure out where the buck are during the day. Right. Where I can actually shoot them. Yeah. Does this not get you excited? Because I know you're like, you're not like hardcore into whitetails, like obviously like I am, but like, yeah. does it not get you excited right now? Like we're talking about a deer camp of going up there and like- It, it does. The possibility of like rut hunting up there during mm-hmm. our season. It does. I think more because it's like my cabin. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah, that yeah. has something to do I mean, with it. I love or like, cabin. Yeah. I love my cabin. Like I literally do. I was like, this is like- I'm going up this weekend. Mm-hmm. Memorial Day weekend, Great weekend. We're going up. Yeah. By the way, this is recorded on uh, this part right here is recorded on May 22nd. Yeah. So we're going up. Um, Kira and I are going up mm-hmm. this weekend. So I was like, all right, it'll be nice. I haven't been up since April. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to go. Yeah, you need a cabin trip. I need a cabin trip so bad. So we're that going. Woods. So we're going up. Yeah. But I mean, it's nice, you know. And this is like I'm trying to get like the property set up mm-hmm. the way you know that I can do what I can. And, right. You know, get it for future reference. Like, I know I'm not going to get everything done this year. It's not even going to come close. It's a long game type it's thing. A, it's, it's like 100% a long game. Like, that's, I got trees planted. Yeah. I want a million more trees to plant. But there's a lot of things it's, that need cleared out. And it's like, oh It's funny. You want, you want more trees in an already very heavily treed area. Yeah. <laughs> I need a... I need a you, it's weird to think about when you say it like that. Most people say like, oh, I, I need less trees. Yeah, I need to clear cut some things. Yeah. Which there's, there's definitely going to be some cutting done because it's a lot of... Um, um, Invasives? No, like beach, mm, like dying trees. Beach. What well, we all call them, like shrub oaks, but they're not mm-hmm. oak trees. It's like yeah. beach shrub, mm-hmm. like those mm-hmm. little tiny, worthless, damn things. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, right. So my dad's like, I want to clear out this whole area. I'm yeah, like, okay, you can clear it out, Dad. But can I put something else in there? Right. To replace it. That yeah. way, that way it doesn't just grow up with just fern or mm-hmm. useless. Not to say useless, but like not cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not the cool stuff that you think that should be there. Put it that way. Yeah, like it's cool stuff because it somehow needs. Like that's the cool thing about nature is like it somehow it always has its place. Like mm-hmm. a fern, like people think like oh this this doesn't need to be here. Like the monkey vines or something like that. Like yeah, it was damn it's things. it's funny because like everyone says they're invasives, mm-hmm. but yet they're here for a reason, <laughs> right? Yeah, to like every trees. everything is here for a reason. <laughs> Everything is put on this earth for a reason. For me to kill. Yeah. I'm going around yeah, and sure. I couldn't tell you how many damn trees have been knocked over and fallen because it was damn monkey vines. I'm going around killing them all. Well, maybe those trees were going to die anyway. Oh, well, and then I just put a new one there. And then we're okay. Well, then the, that's there you part. Go. See, so they did, they right. serve their purpose. Yeah, exactly. God, damn see? it, Cody, you freaking right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I want to get rid of all these. And my dad wants to get rid of because he's like, I want to clear all this area out. And I'm like, okay, you can clear it out because he likes to see, right? Mm-hmm. He has mm-hmm. that, I need it open and see. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, I'm like, okay, we'll do the animals like that. Right. Not right. necessarily. Yes. Turkeys, yeah, they like the open. Oh, Turkeys yep. like the open. Well, like the, they, like, they like that tall grass where like, yeah. especially the hens, they can lay eggs oh, they, in. They'll walk through the fern. Right. Yep. I see them mm-hmm. all the time. You see a little head poking you up on the see, fern. Like, you're like, what the hell is here? that? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. all you see. It's all... Uh, Random topic. When you're at a beach, okay? Yeah. I know you don't like the beach. You don't like going to the water at the beach, right? I don't really care for so, the beach, no. Okay. So let's say a pool or a lake. Mm-hmm. Like, are you okay with lakes? If I'm fishing, yeah. But, <laughs> let's, the six foot end of I the think pool. The, there's crazy people out there, okay? Um, and when you're, when you're in, <laughs> when you're in a lake, okay? Yeah. And you're like, you're, you're waist high mm-hmm. and your hands are just like, kind of like, what do you do when you're like waist high in water? Do you like just hang your hands there or do you like do the whole little little twirl? Little twirl with your hands. Like not the whole body, but like you twirl with your hands like you or you sometimes like sometimes I'll sit them on top you, of the water yeah, and just, just kind of like feel the pat, waves. Pat, pat, pat. Feel the waves on your hands like yeah. kind of like feel yeah. Go with the yeah. motion. Like think of how like psychotic someone has to be to just stand there in waist deep water which is their with their arms like down on their side. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, no, I can't. Psychopath, man. Psychopath. I'm talking like Jeffrey Dahmer. Get out of that water. Here. Anyway. Anyway, yeah. Back to invasives. Um, <laughs> kill them all. Um, no, like I just want to replace them with other stuff that's actually beneficial. Not even just for deer. Mm-hmm. Just wildlife. And you're like right next to the cabin where the outhouse is that we don't use anymore, mm-hmm. but it's just there. All of that are the beach shrubs. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dad's like, I want to clear this whole area out. Yeah. So I right, had to go ahead. I said, can I plant things there? Yeah. That's not going to obstruct a view. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple 
um, businesses, I guess you can say, that have like native flowers and mm-hmm. grasses. Like and, wildflowers? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether it's... Um, oh... Oh, what's that one? I know right. which I know which one you're talking about. Creative Habitat. That's the one. It's, that's the newest one. And the other one's like Ernst Seed. Ernst, I've heard of them. Yep. Ernest. Ernst. Is it Ernst or Ernest? Ernst. Okay. Yeah, E R N S T. Go with that. And then I think it's like Creative Habitat Solutions Creative Habitat. or something. That's like the newest one that I've mm-hmm. found. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're big in th- that stuff. I think Mike from PA Plotters. Yeah. Shared that on his. I think story. he I also like, oh. he, didn't he do Ern, Ern, Ernst the last year. Yeah, he has a whole couple acres of yeah. their stuff. Yeah. Um, but how, like, I wonder, how nice would it be to have a lot of money and just be able to do that stuff? Yeah. What's it like <laughs> looking at you, Mike? I don't know. It's yeah, just, Mike. It's a lot. He worked up for with it. That? He worked for it. No, he didn't. I know. No. <laughs> We're just making fun of you on this episode. Two hundred. It's the two hundredth episode. By the way, if you don't already know, this two hundredth episode. We're gonna sp- piece things together here and there. Yeah, it'll just be random different dates. conversations yep, at this different point. Different dates. Right now, we're going for. Oh, where's the timer at? Don't know. Thirty-four minutes. I'm gonna. Sp- oh, yeah, the bottom. Yeah, That's right. See, 30, the same spot as always. 30, been. <laughs> Thirty-four. Thirty-four. See, at. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm here for. That's why I face this way. <laughs> yes. Um, but yeah, like I want to get something like that. Mm-hmm. That way I can fill that whole area area in with native um, grasses and flowers mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. things along that way. And then A, obviously it helps with the pollinators, the mm-hmm. bugs and the mm-hmm. butterflies and the turkey. You're going to like it because it's taller. Mm-hmm. So I know the turkey is going to like it. They might build their nests in it. Mm-hmm. They'll walk through it. The grouse might even yep. go in there. Um Heck, the deer might even have well, fawns in there too. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like, um, there's there's a uh, people out there that say, and I believe it, that if you if you have a grouse, if you get grouse, you're in deer good deer habitat too. Mm-hmm. So like, deer are usually where grouse are because it's good habitat. Yeah. Well, in that case, where the fence, you know exactly where I'm talking mm-hmm. about. Where the fence used to be, mm-hmm. I probably should have hunted there. Oh yeah, I jumped a dozen grouse. Well, think think about how many uh, when we walk through there. Think about how many trails. Oh yeah, we're through that there. So dude, rubs all that thick. kind of stuff. It, yeah, it's more thick than it was just a year. ago. Because that wrapped around the front of the mountain right there, right? Mm-hmm. So like that would be an ideal spot even for to hang some kind of camera. Oh yeah, you know? I'd like, love to walk through that just to see mm-hmm. what it is. Like mm-hmm. part of me is like, okay, I want to walk through this and like go, you know, see what it is, everything. But then like. I don't want to do it by myself mm-hmm. because I also know there's bear up there. Mm-hmm. And like the last thing I need is to walk through there and then just like come face to face with a bear. And I'm like, oh shit. And it's, I mean, it's right. almost cub season. Yeah. So during cub season, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I don't want to go in there. Yes. Do not do. Yeah. I learned that mistake, but yeah, don't, don't do that. No, don't I, do that. Like I, if you, if it's any other time of the year, those bear could care less about you. But like, no, the, the scary part is not even just coming up, on a bear coming up on a cub and then you're like where's mom oh f and a where is mom at yep and then cub comes walking over to you like oh well, it's hey, so cute it's yep. so cute then all of a sudden <laughs> and then you're yeah, dead this, yeah this is yeah, you're dead <laughs> you're dead you, you wake up dead yeah you just wake up no dead. one likes to wake up dead no nobody so i was like all right so it's a great area to go check out but it's you just gotta check out the right right yeah. time mm-hmm. it's all it's a lot of pine trees now they yeah put it in they're tall and thick mm-hmm. so like tr- walking through there oh man i mean i'm gonna wait till the, i'll just wait till the fall because mm-hmm. all the bear leave yeah i never see any <laughs> yeah. come come hunt season yeah so i'll I mean, just wait till the fall to walk through and scout it and have put you cameras. seen that um there's one post that goes around about it's about um i think it's about it's about clinton cameron and potter mm-hmm. how the deer are so deprived of food that they're eating the pines. Yeah. Have you, um, did you see that? It was some lady or some. I, don't I know forget where that not. was, to be honest. It was on I've... the, I think the PA hunting page. It was shared to it, I think. Let me see if on I can Facebook. Find it. But, but I, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking Yeah, because they're like, oh, the. Because they were bashing. Mm hmm. I don't know if it was DCNR or the yes, Game Commission. It was, or something yes, it was like, on the Game Commission. We uh, don't do enough land management because the deer don't have food so they're resorting to eating things that they shouldn't be eating yes which is like the pines and some other tree or something i I think it's on like the pa game commission conspiracies or whatever it is yeah one of those um 
I know it was on like some controversial site that they were talking about it. Yeah. And I, oh, Jimmy. Oh, what the heck? Who? Waiting. Jimmy. Oh, what the shit? Oh. I don't know what I just pressed there. Denied him. He's probably like, what the I hell? Li- yeah, I don't know what I just did there. Let me call him back. He's going to swear right off the bat. Yep. Can you hear the ring? Yeah. What's up, man? Hey, we have a question for you. You're you're live on the podcast right now. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're live on the pod. All right, so we're deciding on a deer camp for this season. Deer what? We're picking a date dates for deer camp and we wanted to we called through people and no one answered <coughs> so you were one of the people that did not answer yeah um, we talked so much yeah, shit on we you we talked so much shit on you on this one um <laughs> oh, well, I called back though so take it back yeah, well yeah. it's already recorded can't take that back yeah sorry <laughs> right. we'll talk right. nice from here on yeah, out yeah from here on out so <laughs> Sounds- I think what we're gonna decide and you give me your opinion on this cause Ethan has some good rut hunting uh encounters up there I think it's going to be um, November 7th to the 10th. So it's a Wednesday, a Thursday to a Sunday. I uh, would agree with that. See, what, what I believe here in PA is it's usually like, so the buck I killed two years ago was October 30th. Mm-hmm. Saturday was. Yeah. And he was running. Yeah. But are they mid-November, but I mean, I feel like in this area, you're talking about upstate, right? Yeah, so we're going up to Potter. That's the plan right now, yeah, is going up to Potter. Yeah, I, I feel like up there, it's, it's usually, it's crazy how it works. Oh, he, I think he's going through a dead zone. I'd say you just lost him real quick. We just literally lost him. He must have went through a dead zone. Yep, went through a tunnel. Or he just felt like hanging up. Okay, well, Jimmy says yes for that weekend. Yes. It looks like if he calls back, he can give his reasoning, but um, the call was dropped. Uh, thanks, for Jimmy, for... Oh, there he there is. is. Dude, what the heck? Hey, I know you guys are mad at me right now, but you didn't have to hang up. <laughs> we did not hang up. <laughs> you must have went through a tunnel. <laughs> I just pulled into the house. No, what I was saying was, I think I think that's a, a pretty good uh, time frame there. Yeah. State. Yeah, that's 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 what we're gonna we were gonna do the three day weekend where it's uh the Friday Saturday Sunday type thing where it was the only three day weekend we hunt during archery. Yeah. But yeah. I think I think going up those dates will be a lot better um, for that deer camp. I agree with that. Yeah, buck yeah. moving. Yeah. No, yeah, man, for a fact. yeah, it's and, yeah, it's it's weird how it works because. Like I said, upstate is even just, you know, two and a half, three hours away is, mm-hmm. is different than down here. Well, yeah, because even up my wow. cabin in Clinton, it was the last weekend or last day of archery altogether is when they really started chasing on the mountain behind me. Right. right. So it's. And I mean, like with the crazy weather we have here most years, I mean, I feel like that's the safest, you know, it mm-hmm. could be like the safest three days that you guys have. Yeah. And, and what's your opinion on the. Uh, on the the doe tags just in general like like how we're doing it now or? yeah how we're doing it um even the because i know you have a cabin up in 2g right yeah yeah so how do you feel about the uh moving the date like the first round is now just like pure just 2g um 3b and something else yeah i mean I don't know if they're doing that because, like, the population up there. I'm mm-hmm. not. I'm not too sure why they're doing it. Uh, to go back to like the first part of the question is, I mean, last year was a mess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was an <laughs> absolute mess. So hopefully it goes a little better this year. Uh huh. I mean, I don't like how like we had to wait. Like, I was like, I think eighteen thousand in line. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, like, so you had to sit there and wait, like, because I didn't know if you could, like, go away from your computer or not, so I just mm-hmm. sat there and waited, but Gosh. if you don't have to do that, like, I don't mind it, but I I prefer just to go in and get it. Yeah, I, I think I think just sending, the, they were, I did not have anything wrong with the pink envelopes, like. Yeah, I didn't either. There's obviously, for all the new hunters, there's growing pains with it, right. but, like, Figured maybe out. learn how to send a letter out. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Kids, I mean, we've kids done it that days. way for so long, it's like, and it's worked, so. Well, I mean, that yeah. goes that goes along with the Monday opener versus Saturday opener, too. Right. You did it for so yeah. long. So. Right. There's, a, a, but, you know, to each their own, I guess, right? We're adapting. Mm-hmm. We're adapting. We're people. We adapt. We fly. Fly high, little birdie. Um, <laughs> but, Jimmy, <laughs> thanks for calling I'm back. Flying at, I'm, flying at, I'm flying at Mallard Height, okay? Oh, mm-hmm. God. Nice. That's not very high. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Just high enough. Just high enough to get shot out of the sky, right? Exactly, man. Exactly. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks for calling back. Um, this is Absolutely. gonna be episode two hundred, so you're on episode two hundred. All, right, All right. Perfect. All right. See, you, man. All right, buddy. Take care. See you. So that was Jimmy. Everyone, go check Drawback Outdoors out. Um, if you want to, give me. Uh, they got merch and they got a YouTube channel. Uh, they go duck hunting quite a bit. That's why that joke was valid perfect that why that joke was uh mallard <laughs> nah, it didn't work so that one Insert person call, one noises. person called back so that's there you go that's good that's good so i think we're leaning towards that right now we're gonna have um vote one <laughs> vote one vote one that's it that works that's it no, that's all we need that's all we need. That's all we need. Just so, what are we talking about here? Um, um, so, we, we got talked about doe tags. We talked about um, deer camp. Own property. Yeah. Uh, you talked about your property. I mean, it looks like it's grown up pretty good. Oh, my gosh. There's so much Lots grass. Of green grass. Deer love green. They green do like green. They're so, walking I mean, through munching. That's for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that's good. There's so much more to that's do. That's good. I mean, I. who else should we call? I just want to call someone else now. You really do. I just want to call someone well, else. Well, don't you chat. I just think it'd be cool to have people just take a uh let's see uh bu- 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 i'll say you have all the phone numbers <laughs> uh, <laughs> who else would we want to possibly come to deer camp with us derek wolf i, was, <laughs> I didn't want to say, i was like let's call him you have his number right derek wolf <coughs> yeah i do have his number yeah, he could, he could be on I his. have not texted him in since probably that. Um, well, no, that's what you get for not going to his retirement party. Dude, he ghosted me after not going to his retirement party. You heard his feelings. Like, wow. That was just... <laughs> uh, bu- 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 I have so many people on my phone that I don't even like text or talk to anymore. Yeah. I think the majority of the contacts in my phone now are people from work. Yeah, that's, and I yeah. have to have the numbers because of being a supervisor. I don't yeah. have a choice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> should we? Uh, I have a game warden's number. Should we call him? A game, yeah, it'd be the only from time Warren we, County. The only time we ever get one on here. <laughs> game warden, how am I help you? How am I help you? Yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, so I think we're going to do that. I think uh, that was a good start to episode two hundred. I think I don't yes. want to. I don't want to drain it out too much. Yeah, Joe, you know? start dragging. Yeah. I'm shocked that I made it this far, or the podcast, I should say, made it this far. Um, if everyone doesn't know, this is my beautiful wife, <laughs> Jess Hobart. Thanks, babe. What? <laughs> I'm nervous. I, I know. You told me that like 10 times already. Okay. So um, this started, for a little recap for everyone who probably did not listen to the very first episode ever, um, or I don't even know which one you were on before. The drunken one. That one's deleted. So that yeah, was, that was really bad. You were on one other one, didn't we? Do one other one? Or was it? No, we recorded that before we went down to Florida, and then recorded the rest down in Florida, right? I honestly don't remember. That's how drunk I was. <laughs> you were drunk the whole time. Why is this so much higher than yours is? It's the same height. They're literally the same. I have height. no depth perception over <laughs> here. I guess height. you can move it up and down. Yeah, I know. There you go. Okay, there you go. So you were. I would say that was probably back way back before even episode 50 happened way back when the audio was terrible when i had that little white mic i still can't believe that you started this in our townhouse garage on a beer pong table on a really crappy laptop that was a free laptop from uh verizon wireless (laughs) who even used verizon wireless xfinity (laughs) xfinity it was verizon xfinity and it was a free laptop that they sent me Sent us. I'm going to be honest with you. I really thought that this was all going to be a joke. I thought so, too. 
It still is a joke. I guess I guess I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> no, I don't it, it know. Still is I a mean, joke. I feel like you and Ethan, I guess mm-hmm. Ethan came up with the idea, but mm-hmm. like you guys like made it a thing. Mhm. And I guess I just didn't really expect it to be what it is now. Yeah, it's uh it's still I'm not for me, it's still not really necessarily where I think it should or where I want it to be. I think it has a lot more potential than what I'm where it's at right now. Put it that way. I think you put a lot of time and effort into it and I don't think that you give yourself enough credit for all of that. I mean, I see, you know, my the audio has definitely gotten drastically better. Um, I used to listen to them a lot, but I'm not going to lie. I haven't listened to one in a very long time. (laughs) After you you started getting all of these, like, awesome Mm -hmm. people to come on, like, Mm -hmm. I... I'm just like, ah, does it really interest me? They don't really care. I don't care about that at all. (laughs) No, I mean, but you're right. Like, you were... When we first started, when Ethan and I first started, it was like, we were excited for 20 listens. And And I was like, oh, I I am one of those 20. I'm so, like, blessed to be able to do that for you. Yeah. Like, I knew, like, I could count at least five people to listen right off the bat. Well, well, my wife, maybe one, and two, and three, and four. Well, like, it was, so I listen, I still listen to every single podcast I put out. Mm -hmm. Then you would listen to it. Ethan would listen to it. I knew my dad at the beginning started listening to him. And then once I started having a guest on, I think that's when he stopped listening. So, like, that was No, I I did. I honestly don't even remember when I when I stopped. It was it was it, it was early. Yeah, it was early on. It was before this. It was before the studio or shed. The you, woodshed? you now call it the studio, so you can't say the shed anymore because <laughs> you now call it the studio. You cannot lie about that because you do call it the studio. Okay, fine, I do. So it was way before that. I think it was it was before um, it was before uh, what's his name Eric's. Like, what was your, what, I want to get your opinion on it. Like, what was, you thought it was like a joke? You yeah, know, because you were like, oh, I'm going to start a podcast. I was like, <laughs> okay. How many podcasts did you listen to before that? Like, in general? I like, don't you, really listen to podcasts. Like, before, when I, when I, when we said we're going to start a podcast, did you ever listen to a podcast before that? That was in, that was five years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't think podcasts were like really that big five years mm-hmm. ago. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's way different now. And I think that, like, everybody and their mom wants to start a podcast. Because mm-hmm. I think it's easy. Yeah, but I think that, I mean, I don't listen to a lot, but mm-hmm. I don't know how many people put in as much effort as you do. Oh, I, like, don't, I see I don't it on that, a you know. daily basis, like, how mm-hmm. much effort you put in or, like, I guess I also, like, didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I think you felt the same way. Like, you didn't know what to expect after Raylan was born. Mm-hmm. And I think that you're doing way more than what you thought you were going to be doing. Like you mm-hmm. were back to like pre Raylan podcasting. Mm-hmm. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, you do one almost every week. Yeah. No. Yeah. Pre Raylan, pre baby girl. It was, um, pretty much every Saturday. Oh it was, yeah. Like, no, we're not, we're not going back to late that. nights. Like Saturdays. I don't, yeah. I don't really want to do that. Honestly awful. Okay. I came prepared. Okay. To you, put you, you in the hot seat. Yeah, put me in that hot seat. Okay. My first question is, mm-hmm. how much do you love me? Just kidding. Um, before we met, you. what? I married you. I guess that's, I guess that's good enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> before we met, when you were dating other people, obviously, <laughs> did you ever think that it was important to you to be with someone or marry somebody that grew up hunting or like being around hunting or being outdoors? Like, I know that when we met, you weren't like hell bent on like getting married or anything like that, but like. Literally, Did I didn't even think about marriage. I put my knee on the ground. So, well, you must have thought about it before if you nope. bought the ring. Before. Nope. Yes, <laughs> you did. Shut up. <laughs> um, do you think that that was something that you were looking for? Because I did not grow up around any yeah. of those things. I mean, my dad goes fishing, and but like we never grew up with guns in the house or hunting or anything. Mm-hmm. Like I always liked having the first day off of hunting after Thanksgiving. I was like, oh, cool, day off from school, but. I didn't, didn't grow up put around two and it. Two together, yeah. No, I mean, I didn't think that it was important to me when I was dating because I didn't really grow up around it. But, um, I didn't really think about it to be honest. Like, I didn't really because back I guess then you, you I weren't wasn't really into it. I that wasn't much. as hardcore into it as I am now because yeah. I was just like rifle. That was it. Like I would go to every weekend. So there's usually there's three weekends of hunting, of rifle season. So like those three weekends 
would be out hunting. Like every Saturday, I'd be out hunting. Do you that, think now it's important that we're married that we do these things together and we expose Raylan to those things so that not necessarily so that she can find somebody like you. I mean, it would be amazing if she found somebody like you way down the line, but like just exposing yeah, her to those things and like, not just like putting an iPad in front of her and mm-hmm. being like, okay, here you go. Well, yeah, I think uh, being outdoors and stuff like that, like is very important. Like, I think we both agree with that, that being outdoors with our child is important. Yeah. Um, but do I think that involving her in hunting at an early age, like, no, I think getting her introduced to the animals is is good. Like when she sees the the mounts on the wall and stuff like that, like she isn't a scare. She's not scared of them. Mm-hmm. Like the European mounts, like they can be kind of scary for a little kid. Now the shoulder mounts, like she points at that thing right away mm-hmm. and goes deer or like almost says deer. Duh. Pretty much. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Like she says that. So like I think getting them, getting her involved, not necessarily involved, involved, but like introducing her two different animals like she comes out and she points at the animals on the on the side of the bar rips them down and does that kind of stuff like (laughs) but that's that's just that initial step okay so we started dating in september Uh uh-huh so october was right around the Mm -hmm. corner and how did you feel going in do you even remember how you feel about going dating that first hunting season yeah like did you feel like you were like neglecting a new relationship or like, I mean, you, it was so long ago, you probably don't remember how you were feeling. Like, did you feel more pressure to be like, oh, I have to get a deer, I have to impress her kind of thing? No. Uh, when we first started dating, I was still at that the early stage of that where it was like three, three Saturdays a year. That was really it. So it uh. wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, I didn't even have the crossbow yet. We, I got the crossbow oh, yeah. when we were dating. When like yeah. we went to the first American American outdoor show together. So it was probably that first... Um, it might not have been that first year that we were together. Is that it? No, that was with a rifle. This was with a crossbow right here. This one. No, but that was, was that our first? That was, you said that was our first one. So like after, so you, I think have been kind of my lucky charm. Cause like, that's when I started shooting bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was our first, that was the first year we were together. Mm-hmm. Um, I can tell. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> That so that was the first year. Um, I don't even know what year that was. Uh, Two thousand something. When did we first start dating? Seventeen. I don't even know what year that was. Seventeen. Yes. Boom. So two thousand seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. <laughs> Got that one. Two thousand twenty, and then twenty one. So oh. COVID. Mm-hmm. No COVID. I don't know which one was COVID. They both were in COVID. Um, but so yeah. So that was the first year, and then the crossbow was this one. So 2020. So 2019 is probably when I got the crossbow. Mm -hmm. So two years into dating. That's when I got serious because that's when we first started the podcast too. I know that we had some disagreements and everything before Raylan was born. Mm -hmm. Do you think that I do a good job supporting you during hunting season? Mm -hmm. I think you, uh, I was very impressed by how much I was able to go out this year. And I don't want to go out as much this next year. Like, I want to go... I feel like you've been saying that the last couple of years. I know, but I, I I, tend to, like, burn myself out more than anything. Because, mm-hmm. like, I go out so much, and then it's like, I'm not doing what I should be doing. You know, like... Which is what? Getting on actual deer and having oh, encounters like, with deer. What you're saying. Like, that's what I mean. So, like... Yeah, I think you've been great with, with that since we were in was born. I was very impressed with, like, being able to, one do the podcast here and there too during hunting season on top of being going out and actual hunting. And that's why I record the podcast so late at night is because like, I still want to spend time with you and her. So like I wait till you go to sleep and then I'll record stuff. Mm -hmm. So like I, I, that's how I made it happen this year, but yeah, hunting, uh, you have been a, an amazing partner in that. So like, I'm very impressed and grateful to have you in my life with that kind of stuff because there's a lot of, there's a lot of, I I don't want to speak for everyone, but like there's a lot of marriages that, you know, around that time of year, they get into a lot of fights, you know, they do. I mean, we've had our fair share. Yeah. I mean, we're married. (laughs) What do you expect? But like, you know, some people don't make it through that 
kind of stuff. And I think it, it shows this strong relationship and all that kind of stuff. And that you're supportive of me in the podcast as well is a huge deal. Like, I don't think, I don't think I could be doing what I'm doing if I was with someone else or if I was with doing anything else. Like you have supported me through everything. So like the backbone of this podcast is you. No, stop it. Yeah. No. Like I that's, do that. That's a bold statement and I don't agree with that. I'm a you bold are the, person. Yeah, you sure are. But you are the backbone, not me. This, no, this has nothing to do with me. Behind every strong man is a strong woman. I can't pull a bow back, so <laughs> that's <strong. laughs> You don't have to pull a bow back. <laughs> The question actually that I had written down was, mm-hmm. how can I better support your passion for hunting? Keep doing what you're doing. I mean, there's really no, like, I don't need you to go do something else or I didn't think that. Like, I need you to just be you and be a great mom to Raylan. And then hopefully I get to go out hunting here and there. Um, Even though I don't use it as much as I should because our freezer is pretty full <laughs> of it still. Mm-hmm. Um, what's your favorite meal that I make mm-hmm. with venison? Uh, Well, I mean, lasagna is a good one. I like your lasagna. Um, if I could say chicken parm, it would be chicken no, parm. No, with venison. I know, I know, I know. But you always like making chicken parm. Um, I don't make I, it that often anymore. Thank anymore. you very much. I would say probably like cheese steaks or like something like that. I think you made some Do pretty good. Do I make good, that with venison? Yeah. You made some pretty good cheese steaks with it. With ground venison? Mm-hmm. I don't know if I made it mm-hmm. with that. I know you made lasagna, and you well, yeah, made... I made. Wait, what about that one? The beer braised. See, that was good the first time, but the second time, like I don't know, it was. It was. I think it's because I left too much fat on, and it wasn't like as good. Hmm. Yeah. So it was the butcher's fault. Yeah, my my butchering skills are going to be changed next year. Yeah, that's big good. time. That's big a, time. That's what's problem. uh, what's one thing that um, I'm trying to think what I want to say. Like, what do you want me to change for this? This year, in both podcasts and hunting wise, um, for the next hunting season, what do I want you to change? Mm -hmm. What do you want me to improve on? What do you want me to? I want you to improve on how you package the meat and put it in the freezer because I am so sick of taking out what I think is okay venison to use and it's backstrap and you scream at me. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay, you didn't scream, but you got very angry with yes. me. But you don't label anything. Well, because I was always the one who took it out. So, like, I didn't expect you to go out there and take it out. Well, for once, I was for taking one. the initiative. I think that if you... I know that, like, you want to grind it up all nice and whatever. I think mm-hmm. grinding it up prior to weighing it, putting it in a bag, saying what it... Ground whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, one pound or whatever. Because like, like, I don't follow recipes to a T, but also a gallon size Ziploc bag with God knows what kind of cut in it, I'm going to get in trouble for using it. So I've learned my lesson. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) I know that you try to save up your time Mm -hmm. throughout the year to like take off to go hunting, but I don't necessarily want you to always have to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's a hard balance between like, let's do things as a family. Like we've been doing the last couple of weekends, which has been Mm -hmm. so fun. It, there's ways around that, right? Like, it, it, because we don't always have to go do pumpkin or fall stuff on Saturdays. Like, there's Sundays no, too. Yeah. So I think that's like, and that's a good thing about PA right now is like Sunday hunting isn't a thing yet. Only guess, like three Sundays a year. I guess like all day sits are not my fave. Well, that's, yeah, there's certain times I'll do all day sits and there's certain days where it's just like morning or evenings depending like i did last year where it was like i went out for a morning or an evening hunt like when your mom was here i went out for an evening hunt i believe. I think the thing for me was that like i struggled a lot because like yes i was confident in me being a mom mm-hmm. but also i like i guess maybe like always use you as like a safety net mm-hmm. like uh, well like cody like you are you are so good and you've just like taken like the initiative with everything and you just are like I don't know. You just have always been so good with being a dad and like just knowing like what to do. And Mm -hmm. I, I feel like, I mean, I've been like pretty good at being a mom, Mm -hmm. but I feel like sometimes when you were out all day or something and like I was struggling or like 
you know, breastfeeding and stuff, like, I almost felt like I just needed, like, a second to breathe. And, like, mm-hmm. I didn't get that maybe last hunting season because, like, you were out. Oh, and so, I, yeah, it was And fresh. I was, like, yeah. I, yes, she was, like, nine months mm-hmm. or ten months, but it was, like, so mm-hmm. hard still. Yeah. And even, like, you went to North Carolina and mm-hmm. that was the worst mm-hmm. sleep that she has had. Mm-hmm. Well, besides newborn days, which is, like, to be expected. But we were, like, going through the sleep regression all over Mm -hmm. again. And I was, like, really frustrated because I didn't have you Mm -hmm. here. As much as I wanted you to go, I was also, like, please just get home now. I'm so tired. Mm -hmm. Um, So that was difficult. But Mm -hmm. I know it's, you know, I know it's not going to be that way this year. And I don't think that you necessarily need to do anything different. I think just making sure that we continue to have, like, open communication mm-hmm. about what i guess both of our expectations are yeah for what hunting season is going to look like this year mm-hmm. yeah i mean i think um like i already told you two weekends that i'd like to go away two yeah two weekends i'd like to go away and we already discussed that and agreed kind of agreed on that and it's like you know i think that's important for us and also anyone who's listening to have those op- open conversations about like hey like these weekends, like, yeah, it's, it's freaking June right now. Yeah, but like, with me weeking, wor- weeking, with me <laughs> <laughs> working weekends, like, mm-hmm. it makes us, like, it almost, like, forces us to have that conversation yeah. because we need to plan out things. And that's, so. yeah. I feel like for hunting season, I was kind of, like, I, w- I was pressing, but yet also it was, like, I think I was just too tired to really think. Because, like, I would get, like, in the woods, like, She's on her back. I know. But I'd get into the woods. Like, I'd be like, oh, man, I'm going, to, going on a hunt and I love this. Go in there. I'd get a tree and I'd, like, want to fall asleep. Yeah, because you're finally in the peace Yeah, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's quiet. Like, I hear birds chirping. There's nothing around me. And it's like, I just want to sleep. And, like, it didn't really make me want to get up and walk around the woods to find a better spot to hunt. Because it was like, I just want to sit down somewhere and just, like, <laughs> <laughs> go, to <sleep. laughs> go to sleep. So, like. I think, and like, we're getting better sleep now, obviously, just going to bed earlier. I'm staying up a little later sometimes. But, I mean, we're still waking up 5 30, 6 o'clock, but Not yet. Because of work, too, but. Right. But yet, we're. I just, I think, like, making sure that we both prioritize, mm-hmm. like, the things that are important to us. Mm-hmm. And obviously, hunting's important to you, and I mm-hmm. support you in doing that. And I don't have a passion mm-hmm. like you do. Let me ask you this. What do you, like, when you, when I talk to you about a hunting and how passionate I am about it, like, what are your thoughts? Like, what goes through your head? Like, what is, is it like, why is he so into it? Like, is there, like, what do you Before, think motivates me to hunt? Before, when you used to nonstop talk about it, I was literally like, please shut up and get away from me because I'm, I'm, I'm just done hearing mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And then I had a conversation with you about it, and then you got upset with me. Obviously. <laughs> Which, yeah. But then, like, you don't really, like, do it as much. Like, it's almost like I kind of, like, ask you mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And you don't, like, bring it up as much anymore. Mm-hmm. What goes through my mind now when you talk about it, mm-hmm. I just think I'm more, like, proud of you than anything. Mm-hmm. Like, just, like, listening to you say different things or, like, talk about the podcast, like, even though sometimes it's like a tad like, okay, I get it. But, um, no, I think like hearing like the different people that you're having on and like how much you're learning and like the fact that like you brought my brother onto the podcast Mm -hmm. so that you could get a totally different perspective on like filming and professional filming. Like I was, I don't know. I I thought that was like really cool Mm -hmm. to have Danny on here. Um, I think like the insight that you're gaining from other people is really cool. And I don't know. I mean, I, it's nice to like be with somebody who's so passionate about something that has nothing to do with like our marriage or like Mm -hmm. you have a passion that's like your own Mm -hmm. and it's like a whole industry in itself and that you're doing something like this, like the podcast, Mm -hmm. sorry, this fly, um, that, you're doing it year round. You're not just like doing it during the season. Like mm-hmm. you're doing it year round. And I, I just think like, it's really cool that you are doing something like this. So according to LinkedIn <laughs> post by Darren Lee, the founder and CEO of voices, 90% of podcasts quit after 20 episodes. Other sources say that most podcasters quit the first three episodes and then 
and that only 11% of podcasts make it to 50 episodes. Some reasons my podcast might fail. Lack of consistency, lack of authenticity, mediocrity, uh, no content strategy, no system, no, dis- no distribution. People think it will blow up overnight. Blow up overnight. It's easy to jump in with no idea or of your ideal listener profile. We're unique because we're two different people than everyone else do a podcast. <laughs> but that's it. Um, so what would be for all the listeners that have wives that want to start a podcast or that they're hunters, Mm -hmm. what would be your advice to both the hunter and the hunter's wife or some of the other? Because there's some other that flipped like the hunter's wife. The wife is the one that hunts and the, and the Mm -hmm. husband doesn't hunt. So like, what would be your biggest advice? I think something that we've always, okay, we haven't always been good at it, but Mm -hmm. I would say the last couple of years is like communication about things. Mm Mm-hmm. Just expressing your wishes and desires, I think, is mm-hmm. super important. Okay. I think that's for both. Okay. Thanks for coming on episode 200. Thanks for having me on, babe. <laughs> yeah. All right.